My name is Barry Ace, and I'm living in Ottawa. And uh, I'm of Odawa ancestry, and I'm a band member of the Chagin First Nation on Manitoulin Island. Uh, well, I'm a practicing visual artist, um, and I've been practicing for probably 25, 30 years, I guess. And uh, I work uh, primarily in textile uh, right now. Um, and I work with uh, reclaimed objects. So it, can, it includes uh, maps at one point in my career. Um, I will pick up circuit boards and remove the um, electronic components and replicate Great Lakes floral motifs on uh, cultural arts. Well, I draw uh, a lot from my culture. I think most artists, uh, a lot of their work is autobiographical, so you're pretty much, uh, uh, you know, pulling from your past, your history, family history, community history. Um, so in terms of uh, the Anishinaabe influence on my work, um, right now I'm working with electronic components, uh, primarily capacitors, which are round discs that I form into floral motifs. So they replicate Great Lakes beadwork. Uh, and uh, so it's, my work is really a, it's a confluence between the historical and the contemporary. In the Great Lakes area, we used quill work. That was the natural material we used. So beads aren't even traditional. They came in as an import. Uh, they were, uh, beads are a new technology. So the electronic components that I'm using is also a new technology. So it just shows this cultural continuity and our ability to take uh, contemporary ephemera around us and still infuse it with a distinct Anishinaabe aesthetic. I guess I, I looked at the map as overwriting uh, history. It, it represented a, uh, a settler uh, perspective on uh, the dis dispossession and relocation of indigenous peoples on this territory. So one time I was out and I came across a whole bin full of old school maps uh, that would have been from the 1950s, 60s, maybe into the 70s, exactly from the era when I was going to school. And uh, so when I started opening these maps up and looking at them, they were, they were maps of North America and Canada. And uh, I thought, well, here's an opportunity for me to rewrite that history, provide my own perspective of mapping. Because mapping is not just necessarily geographic. It's not something that uh, looks at uh, just the land. Mapping is about your identity. It's about your culture. So I wanted to use the map as the tableau, uh, like a canvas to explore that history and explore my culture and explore, uh, you know, issues of, uh, that were of concern to me. So what I started to do was I started to erase and eradicate uh, any reference to uh, English or French names on location. So I wiped them out. So I, I did the reverse. I basically uh, took away that authority. And then I started writing in Anishinaabe Moin. Uh, on top of the maps, giving it back its original name. In a lot of my work, I have addressed stereotypes. And I've done almost a reversal in some of the work, like my Super Fat Niche series uh, basically takes the vernacular of uh, Niche, which is a street slang for Nishnabe, uh, and I created a persona called super fat niche, but it's a pH fat, meaning cool. So what I did was I uh, made uh, a fictitious character who could transform and address all of these uh, stereotypes uh, through pop art. And I found that um, when I renegotiated those spaces, it allowed me to address many of the uh, stereotypes and, uh, and racism that I've experienced in my own lifetime. Uh, and, and, and give it some kind of perspective and, uh, and turn it around. So using um, art as, as a strategy for addressing those kind of things uh, like racism or stereotypes is really important. 
also this whole mythic construct of uh, indigenous art that, um, for example, if it's beadwork, it has to be almost museum quality. And if you add any elements of modernity into that work, which I do now with the electronic components and capacitors, it's often considered uh, not authentic anymore. So I think the museums over the years have created this big myth of mythic construct that we are, are an extinct people and that we must live, our, our art must live within a stasis, never changing, never altering from what has been collected and presented in these institutions. My first initial concern was that uh, we would be encouraging students to replicate Indigenous art because it was an Indigenous art in the classroom. And I didn't really want to be part of anything that uh, gave authority to uh, people from outside the culture to paint in a woodland style, for example, or borrow from uh, you know, uh, other culture, Indigenous cultures. I wanted it to be uh, unique to their own experience. So I said I would be involved in the project if they could look at my work and saw how I negotiated those spaces, how I negotiated the maps and drew from my own Anishinaabe history and culture and maybe use that as the template or the model of which they could also explore uh, their own tradition, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, whether they're they were born and raised here, perhaps maybe in a francophone family, they could use you know, that, that experience and that history. Or maybe they're recent immigrants that come, or refugees that come from other countries, and they can look at this map of Canada, and how could they redraw uh, that map uh, to show uh, their sense of belonging within this space as well. So that was the idea behind the project, was not to replicate Indigenous art, but perhaps use Indigenous art, contemporary Indigenous art, as a model.